Hello and welcome to today's video. This time we're going to be cleaning up some more hardbacks from my collection. Pretty much the last of my fiction and non-fiction hardbacks now. And then we've been moving on to the larger format hardbacks down the line. But looking forward to doing these. I think we've got some challenges ahead. So sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Okay, so starting out with this one, which is... Uh, well, Richard Beckinsale. So you might know Richard Beckinsale if you're a fan of the uh, the sitcom Porridge uh, with Ronnie Barker. Um, he was uh, Godber, who was uh, Fletcher's cellmate. Now, <clears throat> this is, I believe, quite a scarce little uh, hardback, this. And I think it's just his, like, poetry. Um, it's in a bit of a, an old state, to be honest. So we'll clean the book, first of all. Let's give it a bit of a wipe down. It is got quite dusty this one, but I think it's a. I think this is a bit of a rarity, you know. Um, got a bit of pencil inside. Of course, he was in um, Rising Damp as well. But porridge, oh, there he is. In fact, Ronnie Barker has done the. Um, Oh, look, this must have been published after he died, because, yeah. Oh, that's uh, that's a shame. He really did die so, so young. Such a shame. When was this published, then? 1981, this edition. He, uh, he of course, is the father of Kate Beckinsale, who went on to have a great career herself in the movies. <coughs> But yeah, he was a real mainstay on British TV and uh, a massive loss, absolutely massive loss. So uh, yeah, quite sad. Now, this one here, I think what we're going to do is give it a polish as best we can. Actually, I remember that I just spotted a bit of pencil in that. So we'll do that in a minute. But let's uh, give this a bit of a clean, first of all, because it's in such a state. I'm hoping it's going to come up quite nicely I can't for the life of me remember where I uh, where I bought this it's got a tear there at the bottom of this the front of the jacket which is a shame so what I think I'm going to do with this particular one is uh, pop it into a comic bag so I've got one ready for this just to keep it as nice as possible and stop it getting any worse I think that's the uh, front cleaned up as well as we possibly could. And look at the dirt we got off that. That was that was clean when we started. So it just shows, doesn't it? You can just see sometimes when there's dirt on a book like this. Now, these are just sort of representing some of the tail end sort of biographies, celeb biogs and stuff. Got quite a few signed books here, actually, I think. As I recall, these are signed ones, or some of them are, at least. Not all of them, but some of them. So we'll have a bit more, something a bit interesting to look at. And uh, clean up as we go along. But this will represent the tail end of the uh, of these sorts of size books, um, because we'll be moving then on to the... Uh, yeah, we'll then move on to the larger format sort of arty books and stuff. I've got some Tashan books and I've got some other interesting art books as well. So we'll get to those. And then I reckon the hardbacks are just about done. We've done the whole lot, which I think you'll agree will be quite an achievement. I said, I'm going to have a few, few challenging books, I reckon, today. <sighs> okay. <sighs> All right, let's get this dust wrapper back on now that it's cleaned as good as we're going to get it. I'm not going to repair the closed tear. That's the sort of thing that people would, they would tape it from the inside. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pop it in a comic bag. And that will keep it, stop it getting... 
any worse. Yeah, I'm just going to keep it in like that, to be honest. So, you may have seen, I've been doing quite a bit of bagging lately. So I've got these in my uh, studio now, and this is part of my arsenal. So if I find books that are a little bit fragile, shall we say, or could use that little bit of extra protection, hopefully I'm going to have something on standby that we can use, you know? Put it up there like that, and then fold it over like that. do seal in the air a little bit, don't they? But this will be fine because it's going to go back on the shelf. And I feel confident we've uh, we've now cleaned that one up as, as good as it's going to get. Now we're going to come across a few books like this, which is uh, Being Boise. Look, this is uh, John Chalice from only Fools and Horses and Doctor Who and, well, he was a great character actor, wasn't he? The nicest possible guy you could ever hope to meet. Oh, there he is in his Doctor Who, yeah. Seeds of Death was the story. An absolute classic Doctor Who. One of my favourites. Loved it at the time. And I uh, still love it today. Very, very distinctive actor. And uh, after Fools and Horses, of course, he went on and did, was it The Green Green Grass, the, the spin-off? And there we are, I was assigned one as well. 2011. So that's absolutely fine. We're going to just give it a brush off. Yeah, nice, nice guy. It was John Chalice. Um, John Bishop. Um, now, wife and I have seen John Bishop twice doing his stand up. And it's absolutely brilliant he is. He's a, I wouldn't say he'd like joke a minute, but his stand-up is more him sort of telling stories, you know, about stuff that's happened in his life. He speaks a lot about his two sons. Um, yeah, very, very uh, interesting chap and uh, an enjoyable guy to listen to. So if you ever um, get the chance to see John Bishop live, he comes recommended. And that one's... Oh, well, there we are. That was yeah, just a signed one. Of course, a lot of these... I picked up when I was in the book business and I was able to grab signed first editions as and when they sort of came around. It was always something that I've enjoyed collecting. I'm not a massive fan of the celebrity biography, in all honesty, unless it's uh, someone really epic. And uh, there's been a few that I've had that I, uh, I wish I'd um, picked up uh, through my hands. Now, I will get rid of this old Waterstones three for two. Don't want that on there. Not with Mr. Charlie Brooker. who I very much admire. He's a great guy. I do miss his uh, screen wipe. He'd like review of, the, review of the year. That was always a real highlight on New Year's Eve. That was where the character Philomena Kunk first appeared. Diane Morgan, great character. And uh, Charlie Brooker started out as a Game reviewer, a computer game reviewer, believe it or not. Got this sticker is playing hard to get. A computer game reviewer, and a very good one. I think he reviewed the Sinclair games, and he may have worked for something like CMVG or something like that, computer and video. And I can't remember now, but I remember that's where he started, and then became the great critic and then writer, of course, um, of Black Mirror, creator of Black Mirror, which you, I'm sure you've heard of that on Netflix. But I just enjoy all his writing, and uh, he did a couple of other books before this one. Thanks for paying me. Look at that, Ch Charlie Booker. Yes, yeah, Screen Burn and Dawn of the Dumb. Um, yeah, it's another one which is uh, signed from my days in the book business. This one came from uh, Waterstones Piccadilly. Did a signing up there. That one. There we are. That's okay, isn't it? Looking good. I've got his other two, but only in paperback. Ah. 
Another actor stroke comedian I really like is Rob Brydon. Um, he first came to my attention in Gavin and Stacey. That was the one there. It's a great, great sitcom. Brilliant impressionist, of course, as well. Yeah, don't mind him. There we are. Oh, look, personalised as well. Very nice. A little bit of uh, dust and that has accumulated on this one. But only a little bit. There we are, that's better. There we are, it's good stuff. Uh, unfortunately, I never did get to meet Michael Caine. He's still around, but he's not doing events. But I was very much involved in the publicity and launch of this book. And uh, I did give it a read. And it's a fantastic, he's had a great career, Michael Caine. I really do I like him as an actor. Uh, but this one is definitely not signed because I've never met him. But yeah. Definitely a great actor in a couple of my... Well, he's in a few of my, my favourite films. You know, so, uh, the Italian Job, being one of the biggies. And uh, Get Carter. But yeah, that's a good, good autobiography, that one. Recommended that one. And this one, uh, once again, is for the subject matter rather than anything else. Claire Thomas' is a bi uh, autobiography of Charles Dickens. Now, up until this got published, it was always Peter Ackroyd's one. That was the one that people say, oh, you, you must, that's the one to read. But this has superseded it. And this one by Claire Tomlin is apparently the best one out there. And this is the one that I've got. And uh, once again, I remember when it got published, it's, it's a fantastic book. Really, really is. And uh, I don't mind Dickens at all. Out of all the sort of what you would call classic authors, he's the one I, uh, I most enjoy still. Riders on the Storms. So this is, uh, yeah, this is John Densmore's uh, recollections of being in the Doors. Um, he was the first of the Doors to put pen to paper. So this came out quite a long time ago. Um, when was this? I bought it when it came out. 1991. It's a first printing. Sadly not signed. I don't think John Densmore is with us anymore. It's a great read. It is a fantastic read, this one. I'm going to take the dust wrapper off because it's, I've had it so long. It really is in quite a dusty old state, this one. Look at the top there. It really is. I need the real vigorous brush on here. Yeah, if you're a fan of the Doors, and I really am, I absolutely love them. They're in my top five groups, I think. And you'll love this uh, autobiography by Densmore because it's a good one. Now, this dust wrapper is looking the, the worst for wear. It doesn't help because it's black. It shows up all the little marks and stuff. So, I'm going to spray it directly on. We did do a lot of music books. That was their thing for quite a while. Really, really dusty. <laughs> there we are. Yeah, I think I got... It may not look like it, but in the studio here, it looks a million times better than, than it did. That's obviously the first time that's even been touched since uh, I read it back in the day. I read the book twice, but it has never been cleaned or anything, you know. And it's uh, been through a, a few moves with me over the years. But yeah, I recommend it. I'm sure you can pick this up for next to nothing in paperback, you know. But it's good stuff. Ah, Stephen Fry. This was the first volume of his autobiography, wasn't it? Moab is my washboard. He's a 
he's grey, you know, this is his early years, mind you. And what an interesting life he has read. Or led, rather. There we are, signed one as well. Um, most of my Stephen Fry's are signed. This is, look at the layer of dust on that. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, soon get that up. We have the technology, or rather we have the Mr Sheen, to get these uh, cleaned. Fortunately, there's a bit of fade in there. Yeah, it's because this is one of my ones that I've had a long time. And <clears throat> as you know, not all my books have been stored how they should have been. So some of them have picked up a bit of sunning over the years. And um, since the last hardback video, if you remember, um, <clears throat> there was a few uh, Julian Stockwinds and things like that, which had been um, uh, sunned really badly, in fact, um, and uh, I've been able to uh, replace quite a cut, quite a few of those, which is good news. Didn't he look young there compared to? Well, I suppose that was the best part of thirty years ago, wasn't it? So we'll let him off. We'll let him off. <laughs> but yeah, what a guy. few little spots but they're coming up okay there we are so that was moab is my wash pot and this was the much more recent one uh the fry chronicles much more up to date also signed Did I do the... I'm not sure. I can't remember doing the edges there. So just in case. There we are. Right. <clears throat> this was a great book. This is by John Glenn. That's that chap there. He was the director of five James Bond films, including my favourite. Uh, well, he worked on my favourite. I don't think he directed it. He worked on On the Majesties. But what an interesting chap this guy was. And uh, this is one of the better Bond books you'll ever likely to read. It's really, really great. Yeah, highly recommended. There we are, to Jules. Got to meet John Glenn at um, the NEC um, in, one of, in the, one of the 90s NEC shows. When this book would have been published would have been the year I met him. And I've got a few of his films on DVD. I got them signed by him. The DVDs, that is. Um, and yeah, really, really nice, nice guy. And uh, the real pleasure to meet him. I remember it vividly. You know, really a uh, great guy. And the thing is, if you... Uh, Got to work in the, the book business for as long as I did. You know, it was the best part of well, 25 years. You had opportunity to get lots of stuff signed. And, um, you know, stuff that interested me. I definitely took the opportunity, you know. So, uh, really, really nice book, that one. Now, this one, uh, sadly, isn't signed. It's Tony. I don't have a Tony Hancock signature. I imagine it's quite rare. Um, but I picked this one up at a bookshop fairly local to me in a place called Honiton. And it's a book on Tony Hancock, who I absolutely love. Uh, 1961. So uh, probably a very early, if not the earliest book ever on uh, Hancock. There's certainly been a few since. I've got some larger format ones in my annual collection. Just a few little marks that I can see on his uh, logo there. Yeah, I'm more a fan of Hancock on the radio than Hancock on the TV. Uh, for me, the TV ones, I know there's classics like The Blood Donor, for example. Um, but because you know that he was you know, suffering a bit in his real life with alcoholism, and a lot of the time he was just reading off you know, cue cards, idiot boards, 
I don't know, there's something about it, it's just, I prefer uh, the radio shows, they're just magic to me, they really, really are, and uh, yeah, it is what it is, this is a really good biography of Hancock, and it sort of shows, yeah, what a troubled guy he was, this is perhaps, I think, one of the best books on Hancock that there's been, um, a few little marks on this copy, not much, a few fingerprints on that. I bought this from brand new, so it's just sort of handling and storage wear. dust off that. That's probably 25 years of dust just flown off that one. A little bit of fox in as well. But it's a good book. Had it since new. And uh, now it's looking a lot better. All right. I'm going to make a bit of space now, so I'll just pause it there a minute. Okay, this little Stephen Hawking. My Brief History, a memoir. Quite an interesting book, this one. There's not a lot to it, but it's uh, quite, quite an interesting little book. And my uh, wife very much enjoyed this one. Inside Little Britain, so Matt Lucas and uh, David Williams. There they are, both signed on this one, double signed. Yeah, I mean, perhaps not as popular as they once were, the Little Britain guys, but Can't deny in its day it was uh, quite the show. It really was, wasn't it? You know. All right, just trying to get a little bit of dirt in there. There we are. We got that okay. <sighs> yeah, it's just little bits of. Uh, Little bits of dust that have accumulated. It's a very white cover, so um, any little marks or really shows up. But quite nice to have. So, yeah, double signed as well. Michael Moore. Here comes trouble. I've got all the Michael Moore books, every single one. I've got none of them signed. They just. He has signed in the UK, but I've just never been able to get to meet him. I'm a big fan. And. Uh, he hasn't got anything out. He usually br br brings a book out the year of the American election or a film, but um, he tends to just concentrate on his podcast now. He is getting on a little bit, um, but a very, very clever guy and um, a real advocate for democracy. <laughs> there we are, and that one's absolutely fine. That's, uh, so I've got the rest of them, but they're all in paperback. And on this one, there's not a lot to do, but it's uh, Roger Moore. Ha, ha, ha. This is uh, my word is my bond, and this was the signed one. About a thousand copies, and these are. This is still sealed, so it could be copy 007 for all I know. And that'd be a good, wouldn't it? But I'm not going to open it to find out because it's a sealed one. I don't know what a sealed one goes for, but um, I remember it was fairly tough to find at the time that one, and. Uh, I never, I really regret it. I never got to meet Roger Moore. And I had the opportunity a couple of times because he did like an evening with Roger Moore. And um, sadly, I missed the chance. The same could be said for Nichelle, Nicole Nicole. So I was due to meet Nicole at the uh, Destination Trek Star Trek convention in 2019. And she got a bit ill. So she sadly cancelled on the day she just stayed in the hotel room and never actually came out and met the fans and did any signing because she was just a bit too too ill so um 
I, I sort of had a, a ticket ready to meet her and get a photo with her, but it never sadly happened. And I really wanted to because she's one of the people after Jimmy Doohan who I really admired from the original crew, you know, just for what she did in her life. Um, you know, being such a prominent black woman on TV when she was. The first interracial kiss, meeting Martin Luther King. Um, I mean, just incredible being such an advocate for NASA and helping to recruit um, astronauts. I mean, so much in her life. Um, if you ever get the chance to read this book, or if you can't, maybe just listen to the audio, um, it is truly fantastic. And she had a absolutely incredible life, you know, and um, I really regret not getting the chance to meet her that time in Destination Trek, because after that she uh, passed away a year or two later. Well, then COVID came along and then, well, she passed away a couple of years ago, didn't she, as we filmed this. So, yeah, a real, real shame. Um, but the book is is excellent. Um, and this is the British edition of it. It came out in the States as well. And it was published by Box Tree over here. Now, when the book came out, I had my shop, Purple Haze, and I knew the box tree rep very well. And Nicole herself, or Michelle, rather, uh, was only doing um, one or two signings, both in Forbidden Planets in London, I seem to recall. Um, so, and a convention, I think. So, the rep was able to get me some book plates um, signed by her. I had a whole sheet of them. That's the last one I've got. I've given them all away to friends. But that was her signature. It's, it's on a bit of... It's designed to be stuck into the book, basically. So I'll probably uh, get a mint copy of this one and stick it in there. Because this one's got some... Uh, box tree never used to print their books on very good paper. So consequently, it's got some spotting on the edges, which it is what it is, isn't it? But at least I've got the one signature there. But that is the last one I've got of that. There you go. But yeah, one of the, the better Trek autobiographies. Right, Michael Palin. Yes, this is just uh, a reader and not definitely not signed. At least I'd be surprised if it was. No, definitely not signed, but yeah, what an interesting life this guy's had. Absolutely brilliant. So uh, very much enjoyed Michael Palin. Um, but this was just a cheap reader that I was given, actually. So a quick brush and a quick polish on there. And that one will be absolutely fine. Now, I was having a little look because I uh, couldn't quite remember what the next cleaning video would be. I think it's the next batch of Pelican books we got to do next week. So um, look out for that one. I know those have gone down uh, very well, historically. Yeah, quite a bit of a slight sticky residue on this. But as I said, it was a remainder. Um, I think I was given it. Um, when the bookshop was having a clear out or I picked it up in the sale for like a pound or something like that. So I thought, uh, I'm not going to turn that down. I've read the first one. And it's really, really entertaining. I haven't read this one. But I will. I promise to, Governor. There we are. Lovely. A big old book, but... Very pleased to have that one. Right, oh, look at this. Dave Prowse, Darth Vader himself. Straight from the Force's mouth. So I remember this. Now, Dave Prowse was an interesting character. There we are, signed. Um, he got this book sort of self-published, as it were. And um, he, he would go around he did he organized a tour so he was a master of the self-promotion was dave browse and he went around the uk and uh, he set up signings in all the like the uh, the local waterstones and you know at a book signing you go along you buy the person's book and you pay that and that's it and he was signing the book if you bought the book he would at least sign a copy for free but if you brought along any Star Wars stuff and he's setting up with his pictures and stuff, you know, 20 quid a pop or something, 
basically he got banned from signing in any water stones off the back of it because he was basically taking the mick um, which was a bit of a shame right this is a sad old copy of a living brilliant book so the godfather the godfather papers looking at this i almost think it's just too beaten up to even bother to clean but i will give it a bit of a clean simply because I don't want a really dirty book like this on the shelf. I want to at least know I've done the best I can with it. I'll stay up there then, why don't you? So this is the book that Mario Puzo wrote. He Obviously, he wrote The Godfather. And it's, it's, it's just sad because he made so much money off The Godfather, Godfather 2, and he just gambled it all away. It was a tragedy, really, you know, absolute tragedy. Get rid of that two pounds inside. This book is, if you're interested at all in the history of The Godfather, this book is blimmin' magic, I tell you. It is great. So it's recommended. Perhaps not... Perhaps try and pick up a paperback copy or something here. I mean, look at the state of this. It's appalling, isn't it, really? Avert your eyes. You didn't see this in my collection, but I've got it for one very good reason. It's a hell of a book. So, uh... That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. But it is awful. But I'm hoping I can at least tidy it up a little bit. But it ain't winning no prizes. It's not worth a penny, probably, to anyone except someone who just wants to read it, which is what I've got it for, because it was so good. be honest this would be another in such a fragile old state i'd be tempted to put this one in a bag as well to be honest but god blimey the dirt coming off this look at it it's just insane blimey neck right thankfully it's a nice glossy i'm gonna get a new bit of cloth it's a nice glossy dust wrapper so it does slide the Mr. Sheen eats into it and it does slide over it quite nicely. Even so, wow we But yeah this is this is really honestly it's just a great great book and uh, highly recommended. Well, look, I don't think we've done bad. It's not going to win any prizes of any sort, but I've got it for its content, and let's just leave it there, okay? Just don't mention it. Don't mention it to anybody else, okay? Right. Phil Redmond, I've not read this one yet. Phil Redmond was the guy who created Grange Hill and then went on to create Brookside. I have no idea how good it is an autobiography it is but i picked it up in the pound shop and i thought you know for a pound i'm going to give that a go so hence i picked it up and it's uh, it was not that old as well it was a few years oh this is a book and a half ronald Serrell, who i really like this is uh, uh one of the saddest books you'll ever read unfortunately it's um Ronald Searle's wife um, was dying of cancer and he went in to her every day in hospital and took in a little card with a story on um, while she lived out her final days in hospital. It's absolutely tearful. I mean, honestly, it's awful, but lovely at the same time. So, uh, yeah, it's just great. That's his wife there in the picture. They got her there as a mouse, but. Yeah, it's, it's, or mole rather, yeah. Ah, oh, it's, it's really, it's a great, great book. And, uh, well, if you like Ronald Cerny's artwork, it's uh, recommended. Yes, Mr. Bronson, Michael Sheard, who remembers Michael Sheard? Memoirs of a bum actor. Well, we know Michael Sheard uh, through many things, obviously. Well, I mean, where do we start, really? Honestly, you know, um, Star Wars, Grange Hill. Indiana Jones, there we are. Forcefully yours. He ended up, I think, writing a few of these autobiographies of his career. Most famous for the uh, the actor to have played Hitler most times. 
on screen. Did you know that? So yeah, I remember him coming to the local science fiction group on a Saturday night and we used to have it in a pub. So we had our own bar and uh, we plied him with drinks and he got very drunk and he was the nicest guy you could ever possibly meet. I remember doing a show, a Star Wars show as a dealer in Honiton and when he, he was one of the guests and he came in and he made a point of going around to all the dealers and shaking their hands and saying hello and how you getting on, how you doing? Honestly, what a guy. It really was the nicest, nicest guy in the world. The other great story I remember is, you know those trading cards where, um, you know, Tops would release trading cards and um, the actors would sign it. So they did one for... Uh, what did he play again? Admiral Ozzel, wasn't it? He, they did one for Ozzel. And um, he had to sign 10,000 of these cards. And uh, he got, um, I think, was it 10,000 or 1,000? I don't know, it was a lot. Uh, but I think he got paid £10,000 for doing it, which he said at the time, I think he said it was four times what he got paid to be in the movie, was to sign these trading cards. So um, he said he took his entire family on holiday to Canada. Um, so there you go. Paul Verhoeven, absolutely fantastic director, one of my favourites. Great, great guy. Um, I really like him. He did Sasha Troopers, Robocop, Flesh and Blood. Ah, oh, Dennis Waterman. This is a bit of a tatty old book. Once again, it's, uh, well, it's actually Hutchinson. But yeah, Dennis Waterman um, went a couple of years ago. Never ever got to meet him. Um, he was a big star in his day. Very much enjoyed him in The Sweeney and Minder. They were the two things I uh, really enjoyed him in. More than anything else. This is his autobiography. Unfortunately, I'm afraid to say I've never got around to reading it. Which I know is a bit of a shame. This copy really did get beaten up and it's it's in a right old state. I think it got damp. So I may well end up replacing this. But at the same time, we'll just give it a little wipe now. Since we've got it out. I'm sure I bought this, or I have this in my shop, in fact, brand new. So I'm not sure how my copy has ended up aging quite as badly as it has. But it's not a great, it's not a great copy, this one. So I think I'll probably end up replacing it. It's dead easy to get, so uh, not worth anything. In fact, I might even be able to track down a signed one, which would be cool, wouldn't it? Because um, I don't think I've got Waterman's signature on anything. I've got John Thor. I haven't got Waterman, which would be nice. But yeah, great in uh, Minder and great in the Sweeney. I think they were his two headline roles, weren't they? Right, just a couple of books left now. And then we've done all of them. So this one by J.H. Williams. This is Bandola. So this is uh, Elephant Bill, J.H. Williams. Now, J.H. Williams was a friend of my dad. My granddad, rather. So, um... Yeah, Galley, that was his last name. From J.H. Williams, Elephant Bill. With a little picture. Nice, isn't it? Second print in from 1953. It's a bit bowed, unfortunately. So, but I'll give it a... I'll take the wrapper off, I think. But yeah, my mum gave me this one. She said, oh yeah, that... He knew your granddad, so very, very dusty. But at the same time, quite nice to have. I've got Elephant Bill got published as a penguin, which I've got, but not, not signed, of course. There we are. Yeah, it just needs sort of straightening out, that one. A little project for another day. Now I've just got the one more, so I'll just get this one back in. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. It's been uh, good fun looking through these, but I'm amazed how many signed ones I got, to be honest. But that's the way it goes. I said next week is the turn of some more lovely, lovely light blue pelicans, which we, we know we love. This is great. This is a nice biography of Kenneth Williams. 
another actor I really, really love. A great guy. I would have loved to have met this guy. So, so interesting. His diaries, if you've ever read those, wow. He is scathing, shall we say, scathing. But yeah, thanks for watching today. I do hope you've enjoyed looking through these. It's been some good books. I think you'll agree. Um, if you have, do leave a comment below or give the video a like. Just to say you've enjoyed it. It means all the world to me. I should be back next week, as I said, with uh, a box of pelicans for us to uh, get cleaned up. Thanks very much for watching today. And I shall uh, see you again soon. Bye.